Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Kayla, I'm a self-taught oil painter, and I recently, as in April of this year, started teaching in-person classes, and they just kind of took off. So since April, I've taught over 200 students the process of oil painting, with most of those, if not all of those, being beginners or very, very um, uncomfortable with oil paint. I teach a little bit differently than I think most people do because I am, am self-taught. I teach in a very easily digestible language that allows you to absorb the information without it being like overwhelming. My process is very much informal, I would say. I just wanted to make this video to kind of introduce myself and also to go over the safety precautions of oil painting because that is, I would say, the number one reason people avoid oil painting to begin with, even though you can create such luscious, beautiful, realistic paintings because of the colors and the texture and the blending and the layers and all the magical things you can do with oil paint. There is one scary factor that if you know what to do and what not to do, you're absolutely fine, but um, there is a word <laughs> that scares people, or I guess a phrase that scares people, and that is spontaneous combustion. So with oil painting, there are chemicals that are involved, whether that be the oil paints themselves or with the um, solvents and mediums that we use. We just wanna make sure that we're oil painting in either a large space or a well-ventilated space, or hopefully both. Obviously that's not always easily doable, especially if you have a studio in your home like I did for many years. You just want to make sure you either have a window open or fan on, an air purifier going, something to allow you to breathe clean air because even if you can't smell those oil paints and the chemicals, they are seeping into the air around you. So you just want to make sure that you are taking those safety precautions. I wear gloves in a lot of my videos and a lot of my students do not wear gloves. I wear gloves for a reason because I have a mast cell disorder, which means that I'm allergic to allergic to a crap ton of stuff. <laughs> Can I say that on video? I have skin reactions that happen and actually I have other reactions whenever I oil paint, but that's not the case for most people. Most people are absolutely fine. When you get oil paint on your skin or any other chemicals, you simply wash it off with a dish soap, Dawn dish soap, anything like that. If you take precautions and wash it off and stuff, you're fine. But when it comes to spontaneous combustion, that is where you need to take care because I personally know people who have had their houses catch fire because they didn't dispose of items that were saturated in paint or paint thinner, mineral spirits, turpentine, whatever you use and whatever you call it, it is dangerous if you don't know how to dispose of it. Sitting in a bottle, it's fine. Painting on your canvas, your canvas is not gonna spontaneously catch fire. That's not what happens. What happens is when you don't take care in how you dispose of those items. Right now, here next to me, I have this rag, this shop towel. I use these, you'll see this in every video I use. It is covered in paint. Instead of crumpling this up, this is wet paint, so instead of crumpling this up and throwing it away, what you wanna do is lay it out flat to dry. As you'll see behind me, I purposely shot this video so you could see what we do with these. These are from in-person classes um, that I had kind of recently. So these are still drying even from like five, six days ago because oil paint takes a while to dry depending on your mediums and whatnot. The way I paint and the things that I use, it typically takes four, five, six days to dry. Sometimes a little bit longer, sometimes less. This is just pure oil paint and pure rags with pure Gamsol, which is the mineral spirits that we use to clean brushes. This has it's on all of these uh, shop towels and palettes behind us. Anywhere you have thick wet paint or a decent amount of wet paint, you wanna make sure to lay that out to dry for a few days at least, sometimes a week or so, and then you can throw it away like normal. There are a hundred different ways to do this. Some people use cans of water and they, they take the can and then they dunk their rag in the water and leave it in there and then take the whole can to the dump and dispose of it a certain way. That's a lot of, <laughs> that's a lot to do. And the, that's terrifying in my mind because it's just so many steps. And if you forget, like just lay it out to dry and you're fine. What we normally do is we make like a weekly dump trip. Sorry, I got paint on my hands now. I meant to wear gloves that are sitting right next to me while I talk in this video, but oh well. Um, if you, what was I even saying? 
I don't, I don't remember. So we'll let these items dry for about a week or so, and then we gather them all up at once and take them to the dump all at once. You wanna take extra care if you are using oil paints in your household studio. Just make sure you keep lids on everything. So let me grab my brush cleaning jar. This is a, a little brush cleaning jar with Gamsol in it, which is what I use to clean my brushes. It's a mineral spirit, but it's odorless, so you don't get quite that strong smell. Just keep this lid on. Just don't leave anything, any chemicals with the lids off because it will seep into the air. And the reason this happens with spontaneous combustion is very simple. As oil paints and chemicals like this dry, they release gases into the air. And if those gases can't freely escape, if they're crumpled together with rags and all kinds, especially dry items, those areas heat up and they heat up pretty quickly. And then that's when they catch fire. So just make sure to dispose of your items properly in a small space. If you're working in a small studio, I had a tiny little room in my house as my studio for a long time and I didn't have the space for this. Most people don't and that's fine. So what I did was I took a super cheap curtain rod, hung it on the back of my door and I used the little curtain rod clips and I would just clip these up. And then as I added them, I would put them in a certain area for new ones and then I would slide the other ones down. That way I knew they were getting closer to being dry and I'd just keep cycling through. So it only took up about this much space. Thank you for coming to my TED talk about safety precautions with oil paint. If you have any questions, please let me know, but thank you for being here.